visuals aren't everything. Music. The soundtrack is pretty terrific outright. The tone behind certain songs that come up throughout the movie are used to great effect. If I listen to these while I'm doing something else, I can't help but visualize the scenes that they're a part of. Two in particular. Some of the best songs of the soundtrack play as much of an equal role in creating the energy of the movie as the action happening on screen. But what's most impressive is how this music informs the score itself. There are nods towards hip-hop throughout even the subtler moments of the film's music, which only serves to take the sound of the movie to new heights. It may seem insignificant, but this level of care and attention to so many of even the smallest details of the film creates a build-on-each-other effect, and I think this approach is what gives the movie such a distinct flavor and quality. But then, there's the movie's strongest element. Writing. The story is allowed to breathe which is more than can be said for a lot of what comes out these days. I find so many movies rush over setup, world building, and character development just to get to what they're assuming the audience is going to be most interested in. Ugh, comparing The Matrix and The Matrix Reloaded is a great example of this. The Matrix is super exciting and innovative, but the part that blew people's minds and left the lasting impression was finally getting to see Neo in tune with his abilities. So in the sequel, we get way, way too much of that. The ending was meaningful because of the journey we went on with him not because we want to see people getting beaten up. People want excitement, but talented filmmakers know how to make us wait for that. And if you can do that and still make the movie engaging from start to finish, you've really got something. We journey with Miles as he learns about what's happening to him, as we learn about what's happening to him. All while providing fans with familiar characters and classic Spider-Man elements, the movie tugs at heartstrings, it's hilarious, it's tender-hearted and warm, action-packed, and so utterly satisfying by the time it wraps up. But just think about it, how easy would it be to just tell a classic Spider-Man tale? Instead, we get to see a bunch of his alternate versions, some really, really obscure, while also seeing him in his prime and him after he's been through some stuff. My favorite one, by the way, bringing us to my next point, character. Imagine this still being under the writing thing, I mean, you write characters. I just want to focus on them for a sec. Spider-Man's a big character, and he needs a lot of exploring, so why not explore half a dozen of them? The Clone Saga literally has hundreds of different versions. Chris Pine plays him at his best, at the peak of his ability, and does such a great job of highlighting all his classic characteristics. He's capable, quick-witted, completely unfazed by a massive goblin trying to kill him, and just a perfect intro to the character. Nicolas Cage gets to stretch his legs a bit with a fan favorite that is Spider-Man Noir. John Mulaney gets a little less focused, but I was impressed they even went as far as showing us Peter Porker. And Spider-Gwen was handled really nicely. And there's one note there I want to talk about in particular. There's more going on with her character than meets the eye, and these subtle choices are some of my favorites. In her intro, she mentions the fact that in her universe, Peter Parker is her best friend, and the lizard, who dies after a big fight between the two of them. Kind of becomes the Uncle Ben character of her story in that she can't save him in the end, and he's a big impact on who she becomes. This is only looked at again at the dinner party scene where she's telling Peter that this isn't his Mary Jane, while saying how hard she knows this is because she's been there. This is a subtle nod to her difficulty in seeing Peter B. Parker throughout the story, and I thought that was a really nice touch, but the meat of this is Peter B. Parker and Miles. Peter B. Parker was such a creative choice. I mean, he's got a beer gut, he talks about failed business ideas, he takes the bus to get around instead of swinging, all while still being a particularly talented Spider-Man in his own right and making for a hilarious teacher-student dynamic. Tied with Peter B. Parker is Miles. I just love him, dude. Shamik Moore's voice conveys his innocence, courage, determination, and lack of familiarity with this new world he's in. That's new and the relationship he has with both Peter Parker's, his dad, his uncle, and even his own powers is the heart and soul of the story. Until now, even when they've tried, Spider-Man's whole deal has been a quick jump from spider bite to spider powers. Some time will usually pass on screen as he figures it out, but it's never been communicated just how challenging that is. The parallel between this team of seasoned pros and Miles who's just getting started creates something that's never really been explored in Spider-Man on screen before, at least not to this extent. The fact that the spider abilities aren't enough on their own. The movie develops this leap of faith theme which adds a brand new sense of risk and weight to Spider-Man's character. A new sense of hero-ness. The willingness to fight for what's right, his ability to pull off these outrageous moves, to constantly quip at those trying to kill him, his tenacity to always get back up, this isn't because it's easy for him. It's because he's a hero making the hero's choice, with great risk that he doesn't wear on his sleeves. And that is character. The bad guys and side characters are given their fair shake as well. This is, by the way, my favorite iteration of Doc Ock. And appropriate time and attention are given to develop them as needed. They're all beautifully drawn and voice acted by an all-star cast. But the Spider-Mans and woman are where the movie really shines. And that's to be expected. And with that, I will of course be giving this movie a well-deserved 4 out of 4. My favorite animated film and surely to stay there for many years to come. Too much praise? Was Spider-Man 3 an unsung masterpiece? Let me know in the comments below. I love you guys. We'll talk soon.